The Burn or Unburin has the distinction of wearing many affectionate titles. A place of stone, the fertile rock, it has even been referred to as displaying a lunar landscape. Though many of the names used to describe the burn dwell upon its stony appearance, few capture the enigmatic and intriguing nature of the burn's landscape. It is a landscape of singular beauty and diversity. The geology of the burn is every bit as special as the region's more celebrated ecology and archaeology. More so, perhaps, if we consider that it is this unique geology that provides the wellspring for much of the burn's natural and cultural heritage. To begin to understand the burn's geology, we must first immerse ourselves in the equatorial seas of the Carboniferous period some 340 million years ago. These warm, shallow waters were populated by a rich array of marine plant and animal life, the remains of which slowly settled on the sea floor to form layers of calcium-rich muds. Over time, these limey muds hardened into a fossil-rich rock called limestone. Layers of this limestone were laid down over tens of millions of years, separated by periodic breaks in deposition. The result resembled a tiered limestone cake, several hundred metres thick in places, later embellished with an icing of other rocks such as shale and sandstone, remnants of which still survive today on Schlieve Elva, the burn's highest point at a lofty 344 metres. We know that this giant limestone tablet eventually emerged from the sea and was subsequently exposed to massive earthen forces, which caused a dramatic folding of the limestone in places, such as may be seen today at Mullock Moor. These tectonic forces also caused a web of hairline fractures to form in the rock, and over time, acid water dissolved these fractures to create the deep linear fissures known as grikes that characterise the burn's limestone pavements. The geological term for large-scale solutional features such as limestone pavement is karst, a term which would also include bowl-like depressions known as dolines and seasonal lakes known as turlocks. Karst features are not always visible. A dense network of caves wends its way beneath the burn, a source of great attraction and exploration for speleologists from all over the world. Glaciation also played a pivotal role in the burn's evolution. Massive ice sheets peel back the existing protective shale cover from the burn, exposing the limestone beneath to the ravages of ice and water. All of this glacial activity took place over time, which explains, for example, the difference in height between the Gort lowlands and the Burn uplands. The erosional effects of these glaciers may be seen in the region's terraced hillsides, which were formed by ice gouging out loose rock along the vertical joints, while the effects of deposits include the egg-like drumlands of fertile farmland, and the scattering of distinctively perched, rounded boulders known as glacial erratics. Of course, man has also contributed significantly to the development of the burn's landscape. We know from pollen and archaeological sources that the burn limestone was cloaked in a mantle of light pine hazel woodland prior to the arrival of prehistoric settlers. Tenacious Stone Age farmers stripped back this skin of woodland to expose the skeleton of limestone bedrock beneath. Later generations of farmers garnished the landscape with layers of stone walls, tombs and forts, and, in more recent years, redistributed soils to form new fields for their livestock and crops. The limestone of the burn has had an eventful evolution. Tectonic, glacial, solutional and cultural forces all played a part, each one contributing to the unique glaciated karst geology so celebrated today. The result is something truly special. When you take a walk through this petrified carboniferous seabed with its frayed skin of thin Renzina soil, you are aware that no two steps are the same, that each and every rock, terrace and pavement is unique and irreplaceable. Limestone pavement is today considered a rare habitat 
and is a priority for protection under the European Habitats Directive. Most of the burn is today legally protected as a special area of conservation.